the Wardian case revolutionised plant transportation. Today we will be uncovering its origins, uses and pitfalls in Kew's economic botany collection and library and archives. Let's dig deeper. This video discusses forced labour as part of the historical context of transporting plants. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm the collection manager here for the Economic Botany Collection at Kew. The Economic Botany Collection contains over 100,000 useful plant and fungi based objects from all across the world, ranging from food to clothing to medicines and materials. The Wardian case was inspired by terrariums. You may know them, you may have some in your home. They were used by many Victorians at the time as a way to grow plants inside as they were unable to grow plants outside due to London smog. So the Wardian case is a medium to large sized enclosed airtight case. It has glass sides with wooden buttons that go across the glass and it has handles on each side with perforated holes on both sides. This made it easier to transport so that you could lift up the glass case. So here's what it looks like on the inside. You can see the glass panels here, some of the cross buttons across to help better protect the plants on particularly rough journeys, the ventilation holes which would have been covered with zinc, and the plants would have been planted in moist soil down here. Occasionally they would have used mo uh, moist soil as well and mosses along the sides here on the strips just to better maintain some of the moisture. So you can see the wood panels as well that go across. We think there has been some um, additions to this case to better improve it, such as the cross buttons. And we've also had some additions of new panels. Nathaniel Ward was a British doctor and amateur naturalist. He was very close friends with William Joseph Hooker and he was fantastic at promoting his own invention. Hence why the Wardian case became so popular. It's to say many people had tried and tested or experimented with things like this beforehand, but he was fantastic at promoting his invention within these particular circles. But he really did change the world of botany. So the purpose of the case was to transport plants across the world, and particularly for long voyages. It meant that plants were less likely to be exposed to salt water and could survive long journeys without being tended to. It really transformed different types of plants and without this we wouldn't be able to have coffee, orchids or rhododendrons and many of the plants that we have today. So Ward began experimenting by placing a moth cocoon into the Wardian case along with some fern fronds in moist soil. He realised that after a while the moist soil produced condensation which began to drip down the sides of the walls inside the glass case. Eventually those fern fronds began to sprout and he realised after about three years these plants sprouted and had survived. It meant that plants inside these cases could survive long journeys without having to be watered really regularly. The movement of plants was incredibly important during the early 19th century, not only for um, food, medicines, materials and other things like that, but also as a way to establish colonial plantations. So at the time, it was using Wardian cases was a way to kind of establish new colonial territories. This often meant bringing local communities onto plantations in an act of forced labour. Kew's model was very de desirable to a lot of imperial powers across Europe. So it became a model that many imperial powers wanted to replicate. The use of Kew's model and Wardian cases transformed colonies across the world. For example, Henry Wickham was responsible for the extraction and plantation of rubber seeds from Brazil to Kew to Asia, in which has resulted in Asian states being the largest rubber producing countries. These were once British and French colonies. Kew is currently in the middle of the journey, looking at our languages, practices and collections, history with British entanglement with the empire. So I've come across to Kew's Library and Archives to discover more about the Wardian case. We're here in Kew's Library and Archives with my colleague Isabel. Can you tell us a bit about what the Library and Archives do here at Kew? We look after the library collections, the illustrations collections and the archive collections. So I imagine there's a lot of information about Kew's history and the type of things that came in and out. By any chance, was there any information about the Wardian cases? So one of the items we've got is from our library collections and it is Nathaniel Ward's original publication about plant cases um, from 1842. So he published this after he was experimenting for about 10 or so years mm -hmm. since the 1820s. So and this is where he um, recorded his findings. So we've got 
if you look at the, so the official title is on the growth of plants in closely glazed cases. That's interesting. So they were only named Wardian cases after. Yes. So there's records that we um, can have a look at where cases are called glazed or dry, mm -hmm. or just wards cases. Yeah. So there's different ways of naming them. In the table of content, you can see it covers a range of topics. In chapter three, he starts talking about the imitation of the natural conditions of plants in closely glazed cases. So that's when he actually talks about what he's observed by using these cases. And you may notice as well that I'm not wearing white gloves with these materials, <laughs> unless it's particularly fragile or could stain um, your hands or your clothes. So usually wearing white gloves is actually worse for the dexterity. It's actually more likely that, for example, if some fabric from a white glove will snag mm -hmm. on a tear or on the paper. So we, yeah, clean hands, and that's all we ask of our readers as well. So. Isabel, can you tell us a bit more about what you have here? Yes, so this is um, the Plants Outwards volume from 1848 to 1859 inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the ones with the prettiest covers. Not all of them are this pretty with the handwriting on it. It's information about different ways that plants were transported, or like at least the name of the Wardian case, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. And then there's also a shipment to Nathaniel Ward himself in oh. there, which I'll show yeah. you now. So I'll just set up the foams. It's well supported. And if we go to this page here, we've got a beautiful written, beautifully written list of plants forwarded in two Wardian cases um, per Royal Mail steamer. Mm -hmm. I think it's Tamith's Castle was what it was called, to the director of the Royal Botanic Gardens on the 25th of June, 1886. Mm -hmm. And it details which plants were in which case and that which numbers was on their labels, how many plants were sent. And next to it, you can see that someone has gone back Mm -hmm. maybe a few years afterwards, and marked how well they did wherever they landed, <laughs> probably in the living collections where they were germinated or planted. Mm -hmm. So this one has a note next to it mm -hmm. saying, dead on the 8th of June, 1888. Mm -hmm. So around two years afterwards, this one was dead, this one was dead. So someone obviously has gone back, and you can see as well on the other page, yeah. people have gone back in different ink and in different handwriting to write down what actually became of the plants. Yeah, here we've got another list from Jamaica Botanic Gardens um, in 1886 and someone's scribbled on top of the list that it was sent in a Wardian case and then has written down these numbers and the plant names and again someone has gone in commented <laughs> um, how they've how they're doing and this down here in pencil all gone off oh. and then this note at the bottom says most of the plants arrived in very bad health mm. so didn't always go well unfortunately. The next item we've got is one of our Inwards books and it is from our Goods Inwards and Outwards collection so we've got this one here which is um, covers the years 1837 to 1843. They are they, this is what they look like so they have they are indexed by name mm. so Usually, if people are looking for certain things, it doesn't necessarily help us to have the plant name. We do need the person um, that might have sent it. Uh, so that's how they're indexed. Do you know where some of these specimens ended up? Did they always go into the living collections or the gardens that you see? Or did they come into the economic botany collection? Do you know where? Some it really varies. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we can trace the plant from arrival through to where it ended up. Sometimes it's sort of a bit of a dead end. Mm. Um, that's sort of the beauty of research, I guess. Yeah. And usually they did end up maybe in living collections or in the economic botany collection or the herbarium collection. Mm. So here you have Wardian cases sent out wow. and then Wardian cases returned. And so whatever case, so this case um, went out to a Mr. N. Wilson um, in Jamaica. It was one case that was sent out with um, sun-dry tro tropical plants and it was returned over a year later and then there's a reference to another book which will have that as a record of what he sent oh, back. That's amazing. The handwriting is, is amazing. It's, <laughs> it's one of my favourite things yeah. about my job. Thank you so much Isabel for showing us that amazing material and just some of the material from Library and Archives related to the Wardian case. It's been amazing to see in person. So it is really just a snapshot of what we hold. And if you would like to find out more about Nathaniel Ward or our archive collections in general, please get in touch. We would love to welcome you into our reading room. Thanks for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to learn more about the work that Q does, visit our website for more information.